Hey y'all, it's Basehead Dipper here, dipping some Skull Long Cut Classic Wintergreen. I tell you, this is actually some pretty good stuff right here. I actually got a little coupon type thing. Save 75 cents on this can, or whatever. But um, what I want to talk about is, a lot of people think these things are pointless. I don't think they're pointless, per se, because they have some good uses. Say, if you're like working on an Xbox or something, or you're cleaning your knife or gun and you can stick the little um, screws or pins in it or even if you're working on one of these now this is a sound level meter from Radio Shack I've had this thing for a couple of years now actually and this thing has seen it all but guess what guys it still works and it actually measures sound accurately which is surprising um, I don't use this for car audio setups, I use it for my home audio, and just scientific experiments, like, my dog, he can bark at like 108 decibels or something like that, and it's pretty fun to mess with. Now, the most accurate sound level meters on the planet are SPL meters, or term labs, but I'm not going to go into all that, because that's going to be for a different video whenever I get around to making it. So... <clears throat> With uh, this out of the way, I want to talk about game consoles. I see a lot of kids n nowadays who play Xbox and PlayStation. Now, that's fine and all, but when I sit here and tell them, oh, yeah, well, the f console I grew up with was Nintendo NES, and they're like, what? What kind of old shit is that? And, you know, it literally breaks my heart to see that these kids... Don't even know what the consoles were back then. Now, I was born in 95, and I started playing console games since I was like uh, 6 or 7. Uh, I may, may have been younger than that. But um, the very first console I ever played was no PlayStation, was no Xbox, it wasn't none of that. It was Nintendo NES. And my favorite game was Super Mario Brothers. And I tell them about Super Mario Brothers, oh, you mean Mario Kart? No. Just no. Super Mario Brothers is an 8-bit game for Nintendo NES. I don't know when the console was developed. Didn't know when that uh, game was actually released. But I knew about the game. Now, I'm a Mario fanatic. I've always have been. I've loved Mario Kart, Super Mario Brothers. That's really the only two I ever played. And the main one that I used to play was Super Mario Brothers. And then I got my Nintendo DSi and a game for Christmas. And my game of choice was Mario Kart. Because I wanted to keep on that tradition of Super Mario. Or Mario as they call it now. So yeah. And I just got done talking to a girl that has um a Mario character. Like one of those little stuffed animal type thingies. I mean, her was talking about uh, Super Mario and whatnot. And I said, man, I can't believe I let those times go by. Or let that pass go. She goes, well, you don't have to. I said, well, those games are hard to find now. She goes, play it online. And like I told her, it's, it's not the same as playing on an old tube-style TV with an 8-bit resolution as well as an analog connection. It, it's just not the same. I mean, if you had the childhood I have... Like, I'm not poor, but I got things every now and then, but they couldn't be too expensive. So, the very um, last game console I ever got was the PlayStation 3, and then the console before that is my Xbox 360, and then the little Nintendo DSi was before that. But, I was fortunate. I mean, there's a lot of kids out there who can't afford these things. And I mean, <clears throat> I see a lot of kids on Xbox and PlayStation and all that on YouTube. They take everything for granted. They don't sit here, sit down, and realize, well, I'm fortunate. I mean, there's a lot of kids out here or out there who cannot afford these types of things. And I think if the um, parents would sit down with their kids, now I'm not trying to be like a dick or anything, and uh, make it like the parents are bad. Just sit down with the uh, kids. Show them the consoles they had when they were growing up. Like Atari. 
um, Nintendo NES, Nintendo 64, and all that, and just show them how it uh, all started and whatnot. Now, I don't know when video games started. <clears throat> I know the um, oldest video game was on PC. Now, that was before they came out with all these fancy consoles like Atari, Nintendo, and all that, GameCube, you name it. Um, I have played GameCube. Didn't, was a really big fan of it. The only thing I liked about GameCube was The Legend of Zelda. That was the only reason I actually tried playing it. I sucked at it. Um, I didn't really like the way the controller is designed. I like these controllers a little bit better than the old uh, Nintendo controllers like the NES and whatnot. But these are ideal for gaming. Um, this one, I don't really care for it. This one is more ergonomic than the uh, PlayStation, but that's my opinion. So, yeah. I think if the uh, parents would just sit down with the kids, show them the uh, consoles throughout the history, like I said, the Atari, and then we have PC, the old, old PC, before they even had, like, Windows and all that. I think the oldest PC i ever seen was... Macintosh and IBM. Or was it IBM straight? I don't know. I can't remember, guys. That was a long time ago. I do remember seeing an IBM at school. And then things were slow. You think you're, oh, my Android's slow. My iPhone's slow. No, you have not seen slow until you play on, or t until you use an IBM. Them computers are horrible. But, um, anyways, moving on, I wanted to show you this, uh, saw that my grandmother got, and I tell you, I actually had a chance to use this, uh, I can't, I don't know what time it is, I don't know if it's, uh, was last night or today, I can't remember, but, um, this thing works good, and it's nothing expensive, it's a G-saw, folding gold saw or something like that, it's a multi-use saw, or multi-purpose saw, but, this thing actually came in handy. Um, she needed like a dead weed cut. And she realized that she had bought this. And I tell you, even though... I'm going to show you real quick. I'm not going to bend it too much. The blade's a little flimsy. But this actually works good on like little weeds and uh, small sticks and whatnot. And the handle is really comfortable. The teeth are sharp. Um, they have angle teeth to make it easier for cutting, but other than that, it worked really well. Um, it's got a solid lockup. And most of y'all probably are concerned, like, oh, well, the lock's back here. Wouldn't that pose a problem? No, because you're not gripping it all the way up here. You're actually gripping it right here. So that helps a little bit. Um, it does like to get hung up a little bit on some things, but... I've had no problems with it, and it's a rubberized textured handle, or rubberized plastic, or something like that, but it is comfortable, I'm not going to lie, this thing is really comfortable, it doesn't hurt your hands, and it's easy to clean, <clears throat> so yeah, um, I am going to be getting a machete soon, on uh, another one. Um, I forgot what the um, machete I'm going to be getting, but we're buying it from a lady that buys all these uh, storage lockers at a storage auction. And, yeah, I'm also getting a little PC set. Hopefully it's a PC set, and hopefully it's not something else, um, like a um, heater or something. But it ha it looks like it has two little speakers about that big. They're like little pod speakers, and it has like a... A pill-shaped subwoofer. That's what it looks like to me. Um, it's about, I can't tell you, but it's probably about uh, this big. Um, it probably won't put out much space, but it'll come in handy. Be like a little travel system. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. This is Basehead Dipper signing out.